Hello everybody. This is Yoko's Band of Anime Reactions. I think I'm taken to making sure this thing is fixed every time. And it's currently Sunday. Just uh, waiting for my food to get done. And I actually bought this yesterday. Not yesterday, uh, when did I buy this? Uh, Friday, I think. Yeah, Friday. I had seen them and I was like, wait, when did we start selling these? <laughs> and I am so happy because it actually has my favorite Pokemon on the cover. Or on the tin, that's funny. <coughs> Hang on. Okay. Anyway, this is going to be my review for My Hero Academia Season 4 Episode 13. And, uh, yeah, in this episode, Togata and Twice actually show off their little, I guess, anti-hero thing, because uh, Togata ends up disguising herself as Deku using her quirk. I guess she got some of his blood. Enough, at least, to make a transformation. And she went up top and told Uraraka and the others, hey, the heroes need help down below, and uh, the what was her the dragon hero, whatever you want to call her. She uh, grabbed the hero, the villain they were so doing, and t slammed him down into where the others are fighting. And, uh, that was at the end of the last episode, I think. So, uh, Eri was about to go with Overhaul, and then she decided to take a chance after seeing Lamillion's cloak still, or cape still flying around, that she needs to take a chance and get, let them help her. And she goes jumping off of the over thing that she was standing on, and goes straight to Deku, and he catches her. And, uh... Yeah, her quirk finally activates, and it is actually rewind. In which case, if you are in contact with her long enough, and she's got her quirk activated, she could rewind you enough to where you don't exist. And that's actually what happened to her father. He was trying to reach and hold, the chi hold her when she was still little, and she made him disappear. And I'm guessing that was part of the reason why her mother left and left her in the care of her grandfather, which was uh, the Yakuza Lord that's in Beth's bedroom right now. So, yeah, uh, that's what happens with her quirk, and that's why they think she's cursed because she reminds you enough you could die. You could not exist, essentially. And. Because of this, Deku's wounds are healed. And I don't know if she ended up healing them enough to where they weren't messed up before. Like the doctor had told him that if he uses his quirk too much, that he could, you know, his arms would be immobile. He wouldn't be able to move his arms. And that's why he developed the shoot styles. I don't know if that has fixed that or what, but uh, Deku realizes her ability... And realizes the only way to counteract her quirk, you know, that you know, drop letting her go, obviously, because he has to keep her close. So Overhaul can't get her, because by this point, Overhaul has you has assimilated himself with that big guy with the big quirk, and is now a gigantic monster. And this is where he explains that his goal is to use Ares' quirk to get to a point where. Nobody has a quirk anymore. Back to the pat. Back to the time where humans didn't have quirks. So that begs the question: Would he, if he was actually wanting to do this so badly, why would he actually get rid of his own quirk in the process? Or would he just be the only one with a quirk and reign supreme over, you know, over? Ignore that. That's I think it's the smoke detector. It's probably from Dad cooking in the kitchen. And he's not a bad cook, it's just the burner probably has something underneath it and it's that's what's making it smoke. Okay. 
Anyway, but would he get rid of his own quirk or would he reign supreme over everyone else in the on the world? Because he's the only one who has a quirk and can kill anybody he wants. If that's what his plan is, then man... Mm -mm. Even all for one will be against that. Anyway, uh, the only way to counteract uh, Ares' quirk to keep himself from getting, you know, went destroyed, essentially, is to use all for wo or one for all at 100% constantly, so that way his body is destroyed faster than she can, you know, repair him, so it doesn't get, it doesn't go any further than it does. And that's actually how he beats Overhaul, is by, you know, fighting at 100%. And he actually manages to defeat Overhaul, despite what Night Eye's prediction was. And Night Eye was telling the others, you know, what his prediction had been, you know, that they would die and that Overhaul would get away with Airy. And the others tried to stop that from happening, obviously, but they're so exhausted from that guy's quirk draining their life that they can't really do anything. Well, they can't do much anyway. But when they finally get up there, Night Eye sees that Deku defied the prediction or the future that he had foreseen. And he was stunned essentially because he had been spending all this time trying to find a way to overwrite the future that he had foreseen for All Might, the one where he gets gruesomely murdered by a villain. And so far nothing had been able to be changed. And Deku actually defied the future that he had foreseen, so he actually managed to change it. So, yeah, he's stunned, but in a good way. So now, now Overhaul is beaten. How are they going to contain him? We will see in the next episode, and it's not what you think. It's probably not what you think if you haven't seen the episode, so we'll see. Anyway, I will see you guys next time.